In this video, we have added a beam and trail effect to our attack. How awesome is this? Visually, it looks much better than our original attack. You can see that the beam adds a bend in the attack so it looks more rounded. And the trail gives a nice effect when it shoots out, leaving the trail behind. The original attack was just a part that we were able to shoot out from the player. It's an important reminder that there is a process when you are developing something. And the first version is usually just to get it working. Then, when you have it working, you can improve the design by adding more effects and improvements to make it awesome. Like this. In addition to the beam and trail effects, I have also added a burn effect. So, when it hits the enemy, it applies fire to it and burns over time. You can see that the character's health bars are reducing. And these mobs are taking damage from the burn effect. Also, the mobs are on fire. Okay, so I guess you're wondering how I did this. Let's start right now. Okay, so the plan is to create a new slash beam part and apply the effects to it. This is what it will look like. Since I have already done it, I will recreate it again so you can see. Then we just have a few lines of code to change in our script to add the new fire burn effects. I'm going to start by duplicating the old slash beam part. So that we retain some of the existing values, such as the lighting which we need. Move it to the workspace so we can work on it. And I just call this part slash beam 2. Okay, add two attachments like this, choose the plus sign next to the part and search for attachment. Select the attachment by clicking on it, and then move it to the edge of the part. Add the second attachment, and move it to the other end of the part. Okay, now add a beam to this part like this. Make sure the beam is selected, and click these three dots next to color. Follow along with me here, to make a color sequence. Change light emission to 1. Change transparency to 0. Add the attachments to the beam like this, just click in the box for attachment 0, then click the attachment we added. Do for both attachments. Change the curve size 0 to minus 2. Change the curve size 1 to minus 6. Change segments to 100. Change width 0 to 0 0.5. Change width 1 to 0 0.5. We can hide the part now. So click on the part and change transparency to 1. That's looking pretty good. We just need to add the curve to the beam. And then do the trail. The attachment on this end is facing the wrong way. To fix it, select the attachment and use the rotate tool to rotate it. I have 25 degrees selected. If you have problems, play with the rotate and also change the values for curve size 0, and curve size 1. It's looking great. The part is showing here. While I was troubleshooting, so I just need to hide it again. Now that's done. We can quickly add the trail to this beam. That's right we are adding the trail to the beam. And not the part. 
Ok, with the trail selected. Click the three dots next to color. So that we can add a new color sequence to this. Change light emission to 1. Change transparency to 0. Change lifetime to 0 0.3. Ok, for the trail, we also need to set the attachments. Click the box and select the same attachments like this. Congratulations! That's both the beam and trail effect done. Let's move the slash beam to part. To server storage. Now in our script, just update this first line. To the new name of your slash beam part. Ok, let's see if it works. Yes, it works, but it's backwards. That's ok, it should be easy to fix. Ok, so to fix it, we just need to change the curve size 0 and curve size 1, settings on the beam. That looks like it worked. Let's give it a quick run to check. Yes, that's it. How awesome does this look? Ok, that's enough for now. Let's do the fire effect, and burning over time script. In the next video. This is the god of coding at Epic Blocks to signing off, see you in the next one.